I'm sure that for some of you at least it has raised more questions than it would answer. Shishkaru has very kindly agreed to answer a few questions. So the floor is open. Uh, anyone? Yeah, I will do my mic. Tell me who you are. Evening, sir. I'm Rahul Mishra. I'm faculty member here. And uh, thanks for your enlightening lecture. I have a question that uh, there is a, a Rajiv recounted several successes of UN, United Nations, but there are big failures like Iraq War, uh, NATO action in Afghanistan, uh, failure in climate change, stocks. UN has become a very weaker institution in that way, with a clash of interest between developing countries and developed countries. My question is, where does India fit in? Do our interests lie in joining the high table of United Nations Security Council as a major emerging power, or we should fight for the developing countries, poor countries, countries which are which, uh, where the voices are not unheard, and uh, and and then, with, and then continue with the legacy of our freedom struggle. Thank you. Security Council reform is basically about uh, inclusion. It cannot be about exclusion. And uh, you did mention that uh, now, in the past about two decades, we are seeing a new United Nations. Now, this new United Nations is basically a function of the type of changes that has come about at the international level. And uh, uh, because there is not much of uh, paralysis of the Council and so on. So, therefore, whether it would actually be a very well justified move to have many more, uh, you know, uh, blockages for the new Security Council that you talked about. And uh, since uh, United Nations, only when the nations are united, you have United Nations. And what we are talking perhaps is about, not about global interdependence, we are talking about international interdependence. Because when we talk in terms of the global interdependence, that means that the global commons, so you refer to many of the problems, I might like to call them as global commons. Now, so these global commons can be addressed in terms of international cooperation. And United Nations is actually a political organization. And uh, if it is a political organization, so progress can be only to the extent that the nations are willing to cooperate. And to the extent that they are willing to cooperate. So, uh, I was thinking that if you, uh, you know, if you could also uh, say a little about uh, international inter interdependence instead of global interdependence because suppose India uh, goes for and uh, you know, underlines global interdependence when we find that uh, what is left is that not even international interdependence has been ensured then perhaps we will not be able to play the role that uh, we perhaps could. And the last point was that you talked about responsible sovereignty. Uh, I was thinking that uh, but as if we can, you know, since the focus is still on the passport, and since the borders and the boundaries are still much more important than international cooperation, whether they should be or not, that is a different issue. So if the focus could be on uh, a sovereignty as responsibility instead of a responsible sovereignty. I am Kant Bhargava, former Secretary General Sark and now living in Canada. First of all, very kind of you to have quoted our Prime Minister his point about responsible sovereignty. And uh, taking the cue from the previous speaker, my question would be that how do you view the problems of bridging the religious divide on one hand and of having human responsibility uh, also is an important uh, thing as human rights. So these are my two questions.
I'm Mr. Neil Jaffet. First of all, I'd like to compliment you on your brilliant speech. My question is, how would India's <coughs> desire to become the school would help India? Don't you think it's more of a desire to be recognized on the international forum than very substantial contribution that a seat can make to Indian security vis-a-vis -vis Pakistan or China? I don't know whether the, the questions will be too many. <laughs> uh, okay. uh, I was just uh, wondering whether UN is still UN or US one. <laughs> now, I entirely share uh, the significance of establishing these international bodies and the great vision of FDR, Stalin and Church. Um, I don't think that Truman was uh, worthy successor as a president of U.S., but still he had that concern. Now, how do we account for the kind of sets that went on in Iraq in the name of finding weapons of mass destruction which were not there? Instead, used weapons of mass destruction in the name of creating democracy there. And the second question is, uh, I have still great respect for Pandit Nehruji because I think he w has been, he is still living, he is, has been the greatest democratic <coughs> prime minister of India. And at the same time, we could not stop partisan. After 65 years, we cannot 